Oh, uh, this is not that hard, but it's also not that simple. I'm gonna show that all, uh, I mean, all factorial numbers are highly constant numbers. This um, is what you're trying to prove here. Yeah. I entered uh, the room and I saw you working on a proof. Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, what is the factorial number and what is the highly constant number? Uh, I think you're familiar with the factorial number. It's just a number that factorial, right? <laughs> a number factorial is a factorial number. Um, but now, uh, having composite numbers are numbers that have more divisors than any number smaller than it have. So, uh, these are the first few, but then I realized, hmm. Look at this. All those factorial numbers are also in here. Uh, so I actually also know that 5,040 was a highly constant number. Plato even thought that 5,040 was a highly constant number. <laughs> so, was true in general so I uh... and it hasn't been proven yet I'm sure many other people were wondering about that uh, yeah I'm sure uh, I I didn't know if I really came up with this but it's, it's uh, just fun anyway it's just like Richard Feynman used to say I wanna just play around with it even if somebody else has proven it already yeah right uh, yeah, it's like favor, but... So how far are you? This is not the complete proof yet, right? Uh, I'm just one step away from being proof. So, um, in order to be able to guarantee that if even highly, no highly... Even if just no highly composite number uh, has uh, less than it has more or an equal divisors than uh, the highly composite number you're looking at, then it's a highly composite number. Uh, uh, then you're going to have to satisfy three rules. So, to prove the rules uh, for factorial numbers, I, I, I did that. So, uh, all of them require the pr prime factorization. So, I I took a number off this, this list here of factorial numbers, and, and I picked 5,040. My favorite factorial number. Who's <laughs> your favorite factorial? Yes. Only the, I don't know, uh, maybe my uh, fourth favorite number. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, but, so I picked 5,040. And so then I've written. We are making a video. We video do it. Поставь на паузу. Или я потом еще раз посмотрю. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, we're gonna, I don't know, edit that out. <laughs> okay, now, uh, we're now going to write it as a factorial expression. By the way, I removed it one time because times it by one doesn't make a difference, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, we've got this. And then I've written every number in here as its prime factorization. And then I've put all the twos together, and I... Uh, ended up with two to the four. Put all the threes together and uh, with three squared. All the fives together. Well, there's just one five, so five. The sevens together, you get a seven. So this is the prime factorization of five five thousand and forty, which is seven factorial, by the way. Now we're gonna have to satisfy three rules. Uh, perhaps the proof was inc was in incomplete but uh anyway uh, maybe someone in the comments can tell me if it's whether it's incomplete or not 
or whether I said something wrong uh, in this video. Uh, so, uh, uh, or perhaps I, I'm just making something up. I, uh, perhaps I have made a mistake in the part that, uh, even if no highly composite number, uh, uh, has more or equal number of divisors than the number you're looking at, it's guaranteed the number is guaranteed to be a highly composite number, uh, you would have to satisfy three rules. Perhaps I'm just making this up, but... <laughs> uh, but you have that option of making up the rules when you're coming up with the proof, don't you? Making... No! That's, that has to be a fear... This is one of the things that you could not define as a mathematical axiom. That's... <laughs> <laughs> you have to accept that, but... Yeah, so the first rule is they have to be consecutive primes. Uh, I know that these three rules are the three rules. Uh, and where did you know that from? From a video. From a video number file. Yeah. Uh, I just watched, by the way. 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 is a prime factorization of 5,040. Uh, but now, uh, uh, look at this. 2, 3, 5, 7. All, all possible primes are in here. All possible prime... I'm at least less than a given value. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, 5,040 uh, has uh, that number. So, uh, 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7. So, 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 is prime factorization. The second rule is that those powers have to be decreasing. Well, that's pretty obvious, again, because, well, multiples of 2 are more numerous than multiples of 3. Multiples of 3 are more numerous than multiples of 4. Multiples of 4 are more numerous than multiples of 5. Multiples of 5 are more numerous than multiples of 6. Multiples of 6 are more numerous than multiples of 7, and so on. So, uh, and... And so... And so... Well, I'm gonna have to pick up, uh... More twos than threes, more threes than fives, more fives than sevens, and so on. So, or weakly more, so more than or equal to. Uh, so they have to be weakly decreasing. Right? Mm-hmm. That kind of makes sense. Yes. Third rule is the hardest to prove. So, uh, uh, for factorial numbers, it's hardest to prove. It turns out all highly composite numbers have an end in a power that's either a first power or a square. And uh, actually, if it ends in a square, it must be one of these two. It, the, all the other ones in, in just a first power of prime. So. So, uh, 7 factorial there. Uh, 5,040. At least if it's a prime number factorial, it's pretty obvious. Uh, so, uh, it's a prime number factorial. Well, obviously, if you have a prime, <laughs> then no number less than that prime could be divisible by that prime. In fact, that's true for any number, even besides primes. Oh, oh no. Prime factorization only contains primes, but we're, we're gonna need something else for uh, non prime powers. So, we've got two times. 
three times four times five times six times seven. At least for primes, it's well, yeah. So, well, that means that if we have a prime number factorial, then we the last prime in the factorial has to be alone. It has to be the only that particular prime in uh, uh, in here, which means it's actually uh, because well a prime that it must be the only number in here that's that prime so uh in this case the last prime is is seven and look seven seven is the only seven in here there so it would be seven squares seven cubed yeah so always the first power at least for prime exponent uh, a prime numbers factorial now for composite numbers factorial it's a little different story so uh for prime numbers plus one, it's pretty easy. So, uh, uh, because two consecutive numbers, uh, have to be relatively prime, so they don't share any common factor except for one. So, uh, uh, interestingly enough, those are actually more numerous than, uh, uh, numbers that do have a common factor except for one. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, there are about 61% of all pairs of numbers have that property. So. Um, uh, so if, let's take a number, add a prime number, add one, and take that number factorial. That number actually must be composite, uh, but um, that doesn't matter. So, 7 factorial times 8. Um, what? So, 7 factorial times 8. That's. We already got 7 factorial. Times 8. So, that's 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 times 8, which means if we. 2 to the 3rd. Prime factor 8 and put all the things together, we get 2 to the 7 times 3 squared times 5 times 7. That's mm -hmm. 8 factorial. Which is also satisfying the rules. Because it's also sa satisfying. And it turns out that any number plus 1, well, they are relatively prime. So any number plus 1 obviously cannot uh, uh, be divisible by the number you started with. Which means that wouldn't contribute to here. That wouldn't contribute to this number, the, the last prime is good um uh uh for the remaining cases we need what's called shebiseff's bias so uh what is that <laughs> uh shebiseff's bias is this there's always this? a prime sandwiched in between any number and double that number so ah okay um that's so, proven well yes so <laughs> So Shebiseff's bias said that, well, the same goes, same goes for, but, well, what about the remaining cases? So, that, so the same goes for any number that's not double a prime. But, look, what about a number that's double a prime that could contribute to this last number? Um, well, it could, but actually, you know, it would actually add a new prime to the list <laughs> because of she Shebiseff's bias. Right, uh. So that would actually add, uh, so in this case it would add uh, 11 and 13. It might have more than one prime, but it adds at least one prime to the list. Uh, it's, uh, and those are obviously single, right? Because, yeah, it's, it's easy to prove that, right? Uh, I think even you could do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, because, uh, uh, you know 
because, well, uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's very obvious. Because that prime sandwiched in between M2 and is not the prime that N is, right? It's, it, it's, it's a it's different, different prime. It's not so, the prime so, that so you're it doubling. it has to be larger than... So twi double that prime has to be larger than double than the original prime, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and that means that uh uh that is out of the factorial already. So uh that so uh. factorial number. Now, if I'm not making this up, so if I'm right, then in this case, if only not highly composite numbers di divide, uh, uh, have, have more divisors or equal number of divisors than the number uh, that you're looking at, and it satisfies those three rules. If I'm right, that means that no number, just ordinary number, uh, doesn't even have to be highly composite, uh, but, um, has more or equal num number of divisors than uh, then the number that it, uh, <laughs> the number that you're looking at. So it ha it's highly composite, basically. If I'm right th by that fact, I, I'm pretty sure that we're just one step away. Do numbers further in this list have more divisors than numbers closer? Well, of course, <laughs> because, well, you're adding more of these, which means, well, you're adding more divisors. By definition, <laughs> numbers further in this list have more divisors than numbers that are closer. Yeah. 